Welcome back, mitochondrians, to the Parasite Eve Let's Play. I'm Officer Scott, here at the Scott Spot. Um, so we're about to start Day 2, Fusion. Um, last time we did Day 1, Resonance. Eve escaped. Um, lots of people died. And Aya escaped as well. And we met Aya's partner, Daniel Dulles. Um So without wasting too much more time, let's see what's in, uh, in store for Aya on Day 2. Hey, you okay? You ought to be resting. So here we have Aya at the NYPD 17th Precinct, basically the police station. Um, looks like she's in her street clothes now. Gotta love the black leather jacket and the denim jeans. <laughs> Very 90s. Um, Daniel's here, and on Aya's right is Detective Nix, I believe. And on the left is Detective Warner. Not that uh, they're particularly important to the story. Wish I could. I'm the only one who knows what happened last night. I've been gathering some info on Melissa. She's got no relatives. And no close friends. <laughs> Go figure. She was sick off and always on some kind of medication. We read about that. The people at the opera said they were amazed she could even stand on stage. Her apartment burned down right after the incident. So we have no info on her medication. Of course it did. So what's this spontaneous combustion stuff all about? It wasn't exactly spontaneous. People were actually set on fire. Oh, come on! What, like one of those ESP things? That's the best way to describe it for now. ESP, huh? Well, I'm not buying it. But if you're right... <clears throat> but if you're right, how are we supposed to deal with something like that? I believe her. After all, I was the only witness so far. If you're going to take on a suspect like that, you better ask Baker for a better sidearm. Can and will do. So this is Chief Douglas Baker. Uh, I put a little artwork of him up. He's uh, fairly important to the story. I read your report. Still hard to believe, but we can't deny all those deaths. We're going to go all out to solve this case. Make sure you're well equipped. Go down to the weapons department and give this permit to Taurus. He'll help you out. Permit from Baker. We got a mod permit. So we'll need that to uh, modify our weapon later. Come back later. Okay. Alrighty. So this is, like I said, the NYPD 17th Precinct. It's basically going to be our the hub of the game. We're going to be coming back and forth from here as I chase Eve around New York. They don't have anything new to say. Um, there is a phone right here that you can use to save, although I don't know why you would uh, need to call the police department when we're already here. So just go out here. So yeah, this is sort of like the pl plot development point <laughs> whenever they get new findings. Let's go in here. This is the locker room, I believe. So either they have a unisex locker room or Aya just doesn't care to walk in. Alright, so right away in this uh, locker we have a CM Vest 1. High defense and strong against special attacks. Um, let's see how that compares. Right now we got the N protector on, put the CM Vest. Alright, so it's going to increase our defense and parasite energy, but it's going to kind of drastically decrease our critical. However, I don't really care because you see down there where it says auto? Um, that is actually one of my one of the abilities associated with the armor so it works kind of like auto potion does in the sense that if Aya drops below a certain uh, HP threshold she's going to automatically use a potion without taking up any uh, of her turns and my inventory is full so I'll have to come back here what do you got to say bro <laughs> at last it's mine okay I'm gonna back away slowly now uh, we won't find out what that cop's talking about until a little later in the game Talk to me. Uh, you'd better put on your vest too. Can't be too careful. There's no mirror. Oh wait, I was about to say this mirror isn't actually reflective, but it, it in fact is. I like that there's uh, riot shields in the corner here. We'll come back here later. I love the music for the uh, police station. It's called Out of Phase. It's so chill. Sometimes I feel like I could listen to this at work all day. This is Officer Kathy. She's not very important to the story, but 
At least she has a name. The weapons department? You didn't hit your head last night, did you? It's right downstairs. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, one thing I really love about this game, like I mentioned before, are the environments. Like, this feels like what a police station would feel like on the inside. It's not too, like, flashy or anything, but they've got, like, pictures and medals and framed shit all over the walls. Totally see it being the police station. And here we have our, I guess you could call it your conference room. We've got these uh, desks here that are obviously all right-handed desks, so that's kind of prejudice. So they probably have like meetings and press conferences here if I had to guess. And then I think the only thing I can really discern on the walls here is that this is a map of probably a part of Manhattan Island. And this kind of looks like the same thing right here. But there will be a couple scenes in this room later. Okay. I'm just kind of exploring right now before I advance the story by going to the weapons department. So let's go upstairs. Because remember the weapons department is on the uh, ground floor. Or the basement floor. Let me in. Sorry, only authorized personnel are allowed past here. That's the rule, ma'am. Sorry. Come on, IO works here. What is it like? They've got certain areas sealed off, even to the officers? And this sort of reminds me of Resident Evil 2 as well. Because that's, that's the only other game I can think of where you thoroughly explore a police station. Alright, here, this is the reception lobby, I guess. Talk to me. This is Officer Eddie, not that he's important at all. What a case to have on Christmas, huh? Yeah, I do wish I could have gotten this out earlier, but I had some technical difficulties re recording this uh, episode, actually. Um, but, because I did want to release this episode on Christmas, because day two is actually on Christmas Day. Oh well, it's still around the holidays though. Festive and all that. What a great Christmas game. Okay, so I've actually left the police station now and gone out to the world map. Uh, which is basically just a 3D model of Manhattan Island that you could choose your uh, destinations from. The only other uh, choice besides the police station right now is Carnegie Hall, which is where day one took place. So I'll go ahead and head there just to see what's going on. But it's not going to let me actually go inside. Okay. Uh, let's talk to these fellas. I tell you, my holidays are ruined because of this. They'd better give me extra vacation days for this. What are you doing here? <laughs> I guess this guy isn't happy to be forced into work on a Christmas day. But... Public servants have to do their jobs. Saw you on TV. You're from the 17th precinct, aren't you? You're the one that survived. Got that right. I'm a survivor. I'm not gonna give up. Hey, you can't just come barging in here. You ain't getting no special treatment. Bitch, get out the way. Actually, I can't go back in. I could have sworn that there was a way for you to go back into the Carnegie Hall later, maybe. But I could be hallucinating that. It could be one of those things that you can only do at night. But, I might be wrong. Anyway, before I head back to the 17th Precinct, um, there is a little trick or easter egg that you can do. If you press select while on the world map, the camera actually zooms in and focuses on the helicopter that flies around. I thought it zoomed a little closer, but apparently not. I think it's too far away right now. Come on. Um, it even eventually flies over Ellis Island, where you can see over there. And there's the Twin Towers. This game did come out before 9-11. Anyway, back to the police station. So I think we've done enough exploring. Well, maybe. We'll see if we don't can't dig up anything else before we get to the uh, weapons department. Downstairs. Now, this door directly ahead re leads to the uh, weapons department, but first, let's 
check out these other doors. Authorized personnel only, weapons department. Yeah, so we'll actually need to get to unlock that door later in the game. Go through here. Oh, it's the canine kennel. German Shepherds all the way. Wish I could give her a nice Christmas dinner. I love to just watch them. I always come here after my shift to relax. <laughs> they don't get to play with the doggies? Oh well. Oh, and there's a poster of a German Shepherd on the wall here. Cute. Okay. Enough fooling around. Let's go to the weapons department. There's a fire extinguisher on the wall there. Anything in here? Inventory is full. We'll take care of that in a second. Alright, so this guy's name is Wayne Garcia. He is a semi-important character, I guess. Hey there, good looking. Cut the crap, Wayne. Where's Taurus? That baldy? Who knows? So what'll it be? Shotgun? Rocket launcher? <laughs> yes, please. Wayne! Y yes, sir! Who's this guy? Idiots like you are the reason why guns won't disappear from this country. Wow, topical. Get your ass back to weapon storage. You're far from ready to be handling guns in here. So this is Taurus Owens. Uh, he Apparently he's a gun control freak. <laughs> okay, okay. Sheesh. At least close that thing. There you go. Taurus, I need some equipment. For last night's case, heard it was quite a mess. But as long as cops rely on guns, criminals will too. I think the criminals will rely on guns either way. It's a vicious cycle. I hate to hand a weapon to a young cop like you. Like she needs it less because she's younger. But I hear this isn't your ordinary crook. Guess I can't send you off empty handed. So you can't carry any more equipment. Yeah, because I'm full. Wayne! Take some of her things and put them in storage. Yeah, yeah. You have something to say, officer? N no, sir. <laughs> so you want to leave something here? All right, let's leave some of our equipment because we don't need most of it. Uh, I don't think we need the M84F any longer, if I'm not mistaken. Let me double check my guide here real quick. A guide that I wrote, by the way. Um. Da 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 da. -da. I uh, actually want to keep the M84F, but we will put up the invest, the KV vest. Actually, we're going to keep the KV vest. We'll put up the P220, the end protector, and that should do it for now. Here, this is the most powerful gun I can allow you to have. We got an M6A1 rifle, our first rifle. Oh boy. Captain Baker already notified me. Show, your, show me your modification permit again. So I can give him a mod permit now to make some changes to the gun, but uh, I'm actually gonna save that up for later when it'll be more in handy for me. Can't tune up your equipment without a permit. No exceptions. Later, tourists, later. Don't tell Taurus, but you can use your tool to tune up your guns. You can rearrange equipment parameters and added effects to tweak your equipment. I can show you some cool tune-up techniques. Rate of fire, okay, this is actually a tutorial, um, but I'm actually about to do some modifications, um, tune-ups, so I will just explain it to you as I do it, instead of going through this tutorial. You got it? Trust me, you can never have too much firepower. Of course, can't use them without bullets, so you better make sure you always have your club. Just in case, you know. Now, why don't you leave the stuff you don't need with me? Okay, I'll also give you some of my items then. Um, give him the theater key, because we no longer need it. Along with the rehearse key, because we no longer need that either. And the 
mod permit. I think, hmm, should I give him one of my medicine once? Probably a good idea. I'm gonna just gonna get more. And then I will sort. There we go. Actually, I think I'm gonna give him one of my revives as well, because I shouldn't need two revives. For now, anyway. Okay. Um, the third thing you can do with Wayne is discard junk. I don't have any junk right now. What are you talking about? You got no junk with you right now. Um, so basically, um, eventually enemies will start dropping junk, which basically have no purpose. They just fill up slots in your invent your very limited inventory. Um, but one thing that you can do um, later in the game, once you have a, um, you can have accrued a certain number of junk, and it's a pretty large number, like 200 or something like that, if I remember correctly, and give it to Wayne. Um, he can actually give you really powerful equipment from that he makes from the junk. But that'll be one of the last things we do, I think. Okay, so let's open this now. A tool. And then this blue box here. Six bullets. Always has six bullets. And then over here, I think we have a medicine in here. I need some of the guns on those uh, that wall there, honestly. <laughs> you got anything else to say to us? Do you have an equipment modification permit with you? No. Okay, so let me uh, sort of demonstrate what's going on for this tune-up. First of all, I'm going to equip the rifle I just got. As you can see, even though I can shoot one less bullet per round, um, it has a pretty significant stat boost. 19 attack, to 19 to 35 attack, 62 to 112 range, because it's a rifle, so it's a much better range than a handgun. And 6 bullets in a chamber to 16. So we did that, but now we need to tune it up. So how tune-up works is, if you have a tool, you can use it to make a tune-up. But once you used a tool, you can't make any more tune-ups until you find another one. So let's do, uh, first you choose the piece of equipment that you want to move parameters from. So in this case, I want to change it to M1911A1, which is the gun I was using before the rifle. And then you choose the gun that you want to m move things over to. So we'll choose the M16A1. So then you have a choice of either moving the plus bonus stats, like plus four attack, plus two range, plus one bullets, um, over, or I can move the special added effect over. So like rate of, I can make it to where I can fire three bullets at once instead of two with a rifle. I would rather have the stat bonuses. So I'm going to do that. But the thing is, when you do this, you completely lose the piece of equipment that you're moving parameters from. So you got to be sort of careful with it. Say okay. I don't have an M1911A1 anymore, but my M16A1 is that much more powerful for it. Uh, the one exception is if you have a super tool, which are much rarer than normal tools, um, the piece of equipment that you use to move parameters from will not disappear. If I remember that correctly. And one other thing I want to talk about real quick while we're in the menu. This BP menu here, distribute bonus points. Basically, you can use those to uh, power Aya up. You can make her faster, I believe, speed up your active time. Uh, you can increase how many items you want to her to be able to carry, which really I want to pour my bonus points into that so bad. Or you can um, use it to power up your equipment further. I'm going to save my bonus points because they carry over into a new game plus. But we'll talk about that later. Anyway, uh, I think we're done here. Now, as soon as I move on, I believe that uh, there's going to be a little bit more plot development. So I'm going to end the episode here, uh, Mitochondrians. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, hanging out with me at the Scott Spot, and I will catch you for more next time at the Scott Spot.